Today, let us take some time to study why Christ An Sangong is God. When someone poses the question, why is Christ An Sangong God? A simple answer we can give is because He gives us the forgiveness of sins. In regard to the fact that the one who gives the forgiveness of sins is God, some might raise a question and ask, how do you know whether or not Christ An Sangong gives the forgiveness of sins? Then what do the 66 books of the Bible teach about the forgiveness of sins? Let's see in the Bible how the forgiveness of sins is given and that only God is the one who can open the way for mankind to receive the forgiveness of sins. Let's take a look at the Word of God in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 22. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It explains that the forgiveness of sins is given through the shedding of blood. This explains why, in the time of the Old Testament, forgiveness was given through the blood of animals, and why the way for all mankind to be forgiven of their sins was opened in the times of the New Testament, to the precious blood of Christ, which was represented by those animals. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it is written, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. The Bible teaches us that the forgiveness of sins is given through the precious blood of Christ. Then, who is able to give the forgiveness of sins? Let's see who is able to grant the forgiveness of sins to all human beings who sinned in heaven and were expelled to the earth. Let's see the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 17. Chapter 5, verse 17 reads, One day, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Here, it says that there is no one else but God alone that has the authority to forgive sins. However, Jesus Christ said, Your sins are forgiven. Then today we say, Christ An Sangong is the second coming Christ and God because He gave us the forgiveness of sins. Because of this, some people come to ask, how did Christ An Sangong give us the forgiveness of sins? Concerning the matter of how He did it, let us continue to study through the Bible. Verse 22. Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. When Jesus Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago, He came with the authority to forgive sins. Concerning the authority to forgive sins, by simply saying, I forgive your sins, it cannot be accomplished. Considering the fact that in the Old Testament, in order to be forgiven of your sins, a sacrifice to shed blood had to be made. There must also be a sacrifice offered with blood in the New Testament times as well. Therefore, the forgiveness of sins is given through a sacrifice. In other words, worship. Let's see the way which Jesus established and promised in the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. 
chapter 26, verse 17. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. Let's see how he ate the Passover in verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, containing the wine of the Passover, gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This, what kind of meaning does this Passover wine have? Is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. In the ERV Bible, Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 26, verse 27 and 28 are written as follows. This wine is my blood, which will be poured out to forgive the sins of many. People who do not receive this promise, that is to say, the grace of the forgiveness of sins, cannot be forgiven of their sins, even if they have lived righteous lives on this earth. Before we can be forgiven of the sins we have committed on this earth, we must first resolve the matter of the sins that we committed in heaven. This is due to the fact that we came down to this earth after sinning in heaven. Isn't this the reason why Jesus established the truth of the new covenant in order to solve this problem? This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. While explaining about the Passover bread and the Passover wine, Jesus said, The Passover wine is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then how is it that mankind can participate in the flesh and blood of Christ? Furthermore, how can we be clothed with the grace of His precious blood? Let's look to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, to find the answer to this. Let's see the words of God in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 28. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished, who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? Here, the blood of the covenant is mentioned. In Matthew chapter 26, the Passover wine is called the blood of the covenant. Through these verses, God awakens us to the fact that people who treat the blood of the covenant as an unholy thing and insult the spirit of grace deserve to be punished. The truth God established for the forgiveness of mankind is the truth of the new covenant Passover. And the Bible testifies that those who treat it as an unholy thing deserve to be punished. The way to be clothed with the grace of God's precious blood is granted only to those who keep the Passover. Let's see the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 16. Is not the cup of thanksgiving, for which we give thanks, a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Here, the Passover bread and the Passover wine are mentioned once again. Let's go to verse 17. Because there is one loaf, we, who are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. These verses in the Bible clearly explain the truth that we become one with Christ through our participation in the Passover ceremony. Here, the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks indicates the Passover wine. And the bread that we break, which is a participation in the body of Christ, indicates the Passover bread. Don't you agree? Ultimately, only those under God's grace who participate in the Passover bread and the Passover wine 
can participate in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And only those who participate in His blood can be given the forgiveness of sins by God. Jesus clearly explained the reason for giving the wine on the Passover by saying, It is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. He surely inscribed the meaning of the Passover wine by saying, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. If anyone asks, Can we receive the forgiveness of sins without keeping the Passover? The answer is definitely no. Of course, there was a special case like that of the robber on Jesus' right side, who was given the forgiveness of sins in an exceptional way by God. However, according to the regulation appointed by God, we can confirm that no one can participate in the body of Christ without the Passover, and that no one can participate in the precious blood of Christ without the Passover wine. Then by this, aren't we able to conclude that above all else, mankind must keep the Passover in order to receive the forgiveness of sins? Satan, the devil, led all mankind to commit sin. What was he prophesied to do in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, in order to hinder mankind from receiving the forgiveness of sins? He was prophesied to change the law of the covenant that God established. The reason he prevented mankind from following the covenant God appointed was that only then could he drag them away from the forgiveness of sins. In doing so, God's children would not be able to receive the forgiveness of their sins and will eventually enter the eternal fiery pits of hell. This is Satan's greatest desire. Therefore, God promised to give the forgiveness of sins to anyone who participates in His precious blood without any conditions. This is a new covenant, a new promise given for mankind to receive the forgiveness of sins. In some versions of the Bible, the term covenant is interpreted as a contract made between God and His people. The Bible explains that God gives the forgiveness of sins to those who keep God's covenant and that they will receive eternal life. However, the devil started changing God's set times and laws, as it was prophesied in the book of Daniel. He made tremendous efforts to get rid of the truth of the new covenant Passover. Eventually, he abolished the Passover completely through the Council of Nicaea in the 4th century. The fact that the Passover was abolished means that the way to receive the forgiveness of sins disappeared. In other words, the contract God made with mankind was completely torn apart and lost. When mankind was wandering around without the promise for the forgiveness of sins, not knowing how to receive it and how to find the way to it. Taking pity on them, God came back to this earth a second time. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9, it is written, He will come to this earth a second time to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. It is written that He will teach the truth of salvation. He will come a second time and teach us once again. The Bible says God will teach and lead His beloved children to realize the truth of salvation. Let's move on to Micah chapter 4. The prophecy in Micah chapter 4 verse 1 says, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways. The Bible doesn't say that as soon as God comes, He will punish the wicked and take with Him those who correctly believe in God. Instead, since no one knows how to be forgiven of their sins, and no one can find the way of the forgiveness of sins, He is to teach them the truth of the new covenant one by one. The truth contains the teachings about the Sabbath, the Passover, the New Covenant, the regulation of the veil that women wear during worship, and the teaching about the foot-washing ceremony. He will teach us many things 
one by one, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. His paths is the paths of life. In another version of the Bible, it is written concerning this matter, then God will teach us His way of living, and we will follow Him. All mankind has to die as a result of their sins. The only way to be saved from death and live is to be forgiven of our sins. Therefore, it is God's will to come to this earth and teach mankind the way of living, which is the way to receive the forgiveness of sins, and lead them to the eternal kingdom of heaven. Therefore, the work that Satan needs to do most urgently is to destroy the truth that gives the forgiveness of sins. That's why he destroyed the Passover and tries to distract people by saying, the Passover is just part of the law of Moses. It is something that only the Jews need to keep. However, Jesus did not give these words only to the Jewish people. Rather, he granted these words and this teaching to all mankind who sinned in heaven and were cast down to this earth. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then where did God put the meaning of the precious blood of Christ? He put it in the ceremony of the new covenant called the Passover. Therefore, we can confirm that without the Passover, the new covenant, there cannot be the promise of the forgiveness of sins. Even if someone lived a righteous, holy, and godly life on earth, even if someone were to live like this on this earth, the sin he or she committed in heaven cannot be removed because that sin has already been committed. In order for all our sins committed in heaven and on earth to be removed completely, we must be in the truth of the new covenant that Christ appointed. Didn't God give a sure promise that He gives the forgiveness of sins to those who remain in the truth of the new covenant? I will remember their sins no more. This is the new covenant and the new commandment. This is a promise made by God, a commandment God proclaimed with His own mouth, a covenant and a contract that God made between mankind and Himself. Therefore, when we are asked, Why is Christ on Sangon God? We can say, it's because He gives the forgiveness of sins to mankind. They may ask, how do you know that Christ on Sangon gives the forgiveness of sins? We can say, He is God because He has restored the truth of the New Covenant Passover for us. Without the Passover, there is no one in the world who can talk about the forgiveness of sins nor have any debate on it, right? Since it is only God that can give the forgiveness of sins, the truth of the forgiveness of sins can never be revealed without the appearance of God. Therefore, what does it mean if the truth of the forgiveness of sins has appeared? Who has come to this earth? Isn't this clear evidence that God has already come? Through what truth has this been revealed? Hasn't this been revealed through the New Covenant Passover? This is God's ID card by which he appears along the testimonies of the prophets in the Bible. The Bible says, the one who appears with this truth is God, who has the authority to forgive your sins. Therefore, you must believe in him. Even though he doesn't directly say, I am God, we can recognize him as God when we see the sign that he has. I often talk about the horse requisition tablet called Mape which was carried by secret royal inspectors in the Chosun dynasty. Whoever has the Mape, who does this identify him to be? Doesn't it prove that he is a secret royal inspector? 
In the same way, if someone appears to mankind with the sign of the forgiveness of sins, who is he, even if he doesn't say who he is? We saw earlier in the Gospel of Luke chapter 5 that only God has authority to forgive the sins of mankind. Can't we absolutely confirm that He is God, the only one that is able to grant the forgiveness of sins? Christ An Sangon came to this earth with this very testimony and the sign according to the Bible. All the children of Zion must feel proud of the fact that we dwell in Zion, established by Heavenly Father An Sang Hong and Heavenly Mother. Let's go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth and say, if you want to receive the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, come to Christ San Sang Hong, come to New Jerusalem, our Heavenly Mother. Asking you once again to preach this good news, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.